bow to a Saudi king. That's probably good. So, people say to me, how do you do all this? Yes, I'm going to show you. Of course you can do it. How do you do it? First of all, I need your help on Tuesday to win the primary and then win the nomination. When we win the nomination, we're going to run as a team this fall, just as we did in 1980 with Reagan and just as we did in 1994 when I became Speaker. We're going to, and which means, by the way, we have to replace Bill Nelson with a conservative... Now, how fast, people say to me, how fast will things turn around? Let's talk about jobs. How quickly will people start to invest in new jobs? Late on election night, when we defeat Barack Obama, people will start making decisions to create new jobs. Because we're going to run as a team, I will ask the new Congress to stay in session on January 3rd, and I will ask them to repeal first Obamacare. And I can ask them to repeal Obamacare because I haven't helped pass something which resembles it. Second, I will also ask them to stay in session and repeal the Dodd-Frank bill, which is killing banks. There is a brand new report out today that a thousand smaller banks will close in the next two years. That's the effect of Dodd-Frank. It cripples small business and it has been driving down the price of housing because it creates federal regulators who are against making loans on housing. You repeal Dodd-Frank, you create jobs, you help small business, and you start raising the price of housing in one act. Third, I will ask them to repeal the Sarbanes-Oxley bill, which has been all red tape and no product. It has increased the cost of American jobs and has crippled our ability to compete in the world. Now, I'd like all three of those passed, and I'm going to ask our, the members of our team to campaign on passing all three by the time I am sworn in on January 20th. And on January 20th, I will sign all three on the first day of the presidency as a sign of our seriousness about changing Washington. <laughs> on the day, on the inauguration day, about two hours after the inaugural address, we will sign a series of executive orders. All of them will have been published by October 1st, so everyone in America will know what is coming. The first, the very first executive order will eliminate all of the White House czars as of that moment. You can actually go online at newt.org and, and you can offer up your ideas for what you wish we would do. But my goal would be, by the end of that first day, about the time that President Obama arrives back in Chicago, <laughs> that we will have dismantled about 40 percent of his government as the opening day. <laughs> now, I think this is doable. I participated in 1979-1980 in the Reagan campaign. We had the first Capitol Steps event in history. We brought the whole team together. We won six U.S. Senate seats by a combined total margin of 75,000 votes. We went to work with the help of the American people. And we had Tip O'Neill was Speaker of the House. We had to get one out of every three Democrats. And we did. And we passed the Reagan program. And by August, he had signed the Economic Growth Act, which enabled us to create 16 million new jobs during his presidency.
I came back as Speaker. The economy has started to grow stagnant after two tax increases, one by a Republican and one by a Democrat. And I was faced with reality. I could make speeches all day long. But if I couldn't get Bill Clinton's signature, none of it became law. And Bill Clinton had a reality. If he couldn't get me to schedule a vote, none of it became law. And so we started from a mature adult understanding that the American Constitution only works when you have people who put the country first and who are willing to work together to find a common solution. So what do we accomplish? Welfare reform, the first entitlement reform of your lifetime. Two out of three people either went to work or went to school. Child poverty declined. Parents were working. Family incomes went up. First tax cut in 16 years, largest capital gains tax cut in history. We ended up with literally 11 million new jobs in four years and 4.2 percent unemployment. Let me say, by the way, I am delighted. I'm going to come down and shake your hand as soon as I'm done speaking. When somebody is 90 and comes out because they're that committed, I am grateful. This is the kind of support that's going to make the difference. Thank you very much for being here. I'll come see you in just a minute. Now, let me say, when, you, when we did that, when we reformed welfare, cut spending, cut taxes, got people back to work, the 1997 Balanced Budget Act led to four consecutive years of a balanced budget, the only four in your lifetime. And I think that's a sign that we can get big things done if we know what we're doing and if we work together. Yeah. Cliff and I decided to run after about a year of talking about it. And we decided to run knowing that there'd be negative ads and negative news stories and that parts of it would be tough. But we did so because we really do believe this is the most important election of our lifetime. And we really do believe we're at a crossroads. And if you just take the list of what I just gave you, with all due respect to Governor Romney, there is an enormous difference in our understanding of both how to move the nation and how to actually get things done in Washington. This is a very hard, complicated business. We've had three years of an amateur, and we've understood it doesn't work very well. We need somebody who's willing to change Washington, but we need somebody who knows enough about Washington to know how to change Washington. Both are necessary. Now, I know that all of you have seen all sorts of articles and the Washington establishment's coming unglued. And when we had three consecutive polls this week that showed me leading by a significant margin nationally, they got even more unglued. Well, let me tell you, they should be. I am not a running for president to manage the decay of the United States to the satisfaction of the establishment. And I am not running for president of the United States to make the Wall Street elite and the Washington elite happy. I am running to change both groups on behalf of the people of the United States of America. I do not believe Wall Street can give enough money to run enough negative ads to hide from the truth. The truth is we have been served badly, the American people, by the establishment of this country in both parties. Let's be clear about it. In both parties. Cain flew in to endorse me. <laughs> Further proof that this is a grassroots movement against the establishment. 
I am delighted that tomorrow Michael Reagan will be campaigning with me, which should, which should tell you how false the ads were earlier this week by Romney that suggested I wasn't a, a regular Republican. Nancy Reagan said in 1995, just as Barry passed the torch to Ronnie, Ronnie has passed the torch to Newt, and Michael will be here tomorrow to prove to every doubting person I am, in fact, the legitimate heir of the Reagan movement, not some liberal from Massachusetts. I am honored. The Governor Palin finally got so tired of the one-sided assault that she wrote a very powerful op-ed this week, and she went on Fox last night with a very strong statement. And I'm grateful to her, and I'm grateful to her husband, Todd, for having endorsed me and asked people to vote for me. I think that's another step. Let me be clear. The road we're embarking on is challenging. And it's more challenging if we win. Being serious about taking the greatest, most complex country in the world and moving it back to the right place is a big job. I'm not here to ask you to be for me, because if you're for me, you're going to vote and go home and say, I sure hope Newt gets it done. I'm here to ask you to be with me, because I need you to be with me every day for the campaign and with me every day for the presidency so that together we remind the Congress what we're trying to get done. Together we remind the governor and the state legislature. Together we remind the school board, the county commission, the city council. And, and let me just close with what I think is at stake. And I thought it was fascinating this week. I went to Cocoa Beach and I talked about the future. And I outlined a vision of a space program that's dynamic and exciting where they'll get young people to study math and science and engineering that would recreate the excitement we felt in the 1960s. And I got ridiculed by two of my friends who were running for president. And I, I was amazed by it. You know, this is a great country filled with people who think big ideas. And I think we have to understand the, the, the gap we're at here. Abraham Lincoln understood the importance of the railroad, which was a revolutionary technology for his time. He came out for a transcontinental railroad when we didn't have the steel industry to build the rails, we didn't have the, the engines to go across the Sierra Nevadas. And 10 years after he called for a transcontinental railroad, it was completed in Utah. John F. Kennedy got up in May of 1961 and said, we will put a man on the moon before the end of the decade. And at the time he said it, no American had orbited the Earth. The only person to orbit had been Yuri Gagarin, a Russian. We didn't have the technology. We didn't have the rockets. We didn't have the organization. We didn't have the astronauts. And he said, we can do it in a decade. He said, not because it's easy, but because it's hard. And by being hard, it will force us to get organized and force us to do things. And in Ju how many of you remember July 1969? How many of you watched as Americans? Remember this? Americans land on the moon, not some international organization. Americans landed on the moon inside of the decade. Now, I just, I just want, I'm going to close this, but I want you to understand how serious I am. When the Japanese attacked us on December 7th, 1941, we were a serious country. We defeated, ended the war in August of 45. That means in 44 months, we defeated Nazi Germany, fascist Italy, and Imperial Japan simultaneously. Now, we were a serious country. We did serious things. If you elect me, I take it as a signal. If the American people elect me, I take it as a signal. We don't want somebody who can manage the decay. We don't want somebody who can apologize for the failure. We don't want somebody who can whine about the past. We want somebody who is going to force dramatic, bold, fundamental change on Washington and on New York. We want somebody who is going to get the establishment back to working for America rather than presiding over America. We want somebody who can get judges back to being within the Constitution rather than rewriting the Constitution.
If you will help me for the next two days, we will win in Florida. When we win in Florida, we will win the nomination. When we win the nomination, we will beat Barack Obama and we'll get America back on the right track. Thank you. Good luck and God bless you.